Now, the lads aren't uh, playing until tomorrow, but they're, they're calling it work. But are you really just down here to party? I'm here for Julie, but... <laughs> yeah, can't wait to see... Yeah, we're here to see some acts and just uh, get a feel for the festival, really. Yeah. I mean, it's really a hometown gig for you, isn't it? It is. Like, we're from Atai, just, just over the road. It's like the next town over, really. And um, Atai, for Electric Picnic Weekend, the whole place is just a ghost town. Everybody's here, so the whole of Atai is here. Um, so it will be like a hometown gig, yeah. So will you have sort of Sunday lunch with the mammy and daddy? Might do. Your man might do some dinner, John. Uh, yeah, I could give her a text after this, maybe, and say cook something up for Sunday. But one o'clock's good for me, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, 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 I'll bring the wine. Yeah, I'll make sure. Lads, it, it's just been a, a crazy, crazy year, and I imagine one or two people here may have been in the RDS recently. <laughs> um, I was there, and, and it was. I don't know what it was like. It, it was crazy. Talk us through the day. Wh when did the? Do did you get nervous? I don't really get nervous. I get like really excited. I just kind of I want the day to fly by so I can get on stage because I'm so like I get like really hyper before going on. Um, do you get nervous? I get nervous about things like um, making sure the gear works. You know, making sure my drum kit is set up properly, and that's what I get nervous about. But about playing in front of people, that's that's what we enjoy most. It's 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 just excitement. It's not really nervousness. Yeah. You know, so it, uh, it's very exciting. What happens is there a uh a group picture this hug before you go on, or do you do a bit of yoga or something? <laughs> there is a few different routines. Uh, Owen has to do a scream. I don't know why that's a thing, but um, there's a few different huddles. There's always a tagline before we go on to do uh, wherever we're playing, but we're, we're quite, uh, we're not very rock and roll. We kind of drink water and tea and sit backstage and that's kind of it. We're so boring. <laughs> I or I mean, we're not that. boring. We're really, really exciting. No. Yeah, very <laughs> rock and roll. It was a hell of a support bill. Did you pick it yourself or? Yeah, we had a lot of options. Um, Clean Bandit were obviously amazing. Such a big act. Um, and JP Cooper, we had toured with him. We uh, we supported him around Europe. So that was kind of a no-brainer as well. Then Little Hours were, of course, a great Irish band. So it was, it was an amazing bill. We couldn't believe it. Now, your debut album has just turned one year old. <laughs> Triple platinum, and never out of the top 15. I, is that just a bit crazy to contemplate? It is. It's really hard to kind of um, compute that in your own head. You kind of, you, you, we don't take anything for granted, but you try and we're so busy all the time. You just try to keep going and not think about it. Yeah. Um, but of course, we're so grateful for for all of that success, and our fans are just. I know every band says it, like our fans are amazing, but they really are, and we wouldn't be able to do the things we do without them, you know? I think it's actually quite rare that a band connects so comprehensively with the fans, and obviously the social media thing, and that's important to you because you can get a little bit detached, can't you, if you, you let it happen? You can. So That's why social media has it's been amazing for us. I think we were kind of hailed as a social media band for the first six months because we just put a song, Take My Hand, on Facebook, and it kind of just exploded and we hadn't played a gig for like the first six months of, of, of our life as a band and then it started transferring over and we couldn't believe that there was like like our first gig was the sold out academy i think we were the first band to ever do that and we were like there's there's something happening here and we, we didn't know what it was we just kept releasing music and people kept coming and the shows got bigger and uh, yeah it's been amazing in amongst this and you have been gigging non-stop and we'll talk about some of the big shows you managed to record album number two where did you find the time we, it's like I said this earlier to, to somebody else, I know a lot of bands kind of go away and write an album and they're kind of, they're in the studio for months or whatever, but the way we write isn't like that, we write as we go. I write a song like every day, just constantly recording into our phone and stuff and Jimmy has his own studio, we record it ourselves, so we're, we're really self-sufficient with that kind of thing, so we don't really need a lot of time. It, it's, and it, it's great, it's great to have so much control over it. So you do bits and pieces, and before you know it, you've got an album. Exactly, yeah. We didn't sit down and write an album. We just kind of, it's just a collection of songs that we've done. And when can we expect the records? I'll leave that one to you, Jim. I hate that. See, Ryan does that, okay? <laughs> when a question has to be deflected, he makes eye contact with me, and I'm like, oh, here we go. I, I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you is the answer. Um, right. Fair enough. But it's, uh, it's not far away. And you obviously can't give too much, but they're very candid, aren't they? <laughs> we'll have to tickle them and get all the stories out of them. Um, is when we were young sort of indicative of the general area of the? Yeah, it kind of is. I find when we were young to be kind of an in-between song. It's kind of it's going even further than when we were young is. It's it's a nice kind of bridge song. At the time we wrote that song, that's where it was. There's like 
we just write so much music all the time that there's like two or three albums that we had to pass up and now we're on to this yeah. second album. But when we were young, it's it's, uh, it's kind of an indication of where it's going, yeah, but it's, it's going a lot further than that again. Now, you absolutely had to go to Los Angeles to record the video. You couldn't do it back here and save money. Um, they look like there's a little bit of sunburn involved. I, we were so sunburned after that. I don't know how I escaped that one. Yeah. I honestly don't. I wasn't sunburned at all. I think Owen, you were in bits. Yeah. And uh, I think you two got the worst. Yeah, because we had to drop the car back after <laughs> after we were finished. So we were just in the sun all day. And they were like sitting at home eating <laughs> pizza or something. And uh, we had to drop the car back. But that video was actually shot on an iPhone. We shot that ourselves. Yeah. Jim, Jimmy's so holding. It wasn't supposed to be a music video. We were actually just driving a car around Beverly Hills. Just because we were like, let's rent a car and drive around. And I set up my phone. And I filmed it, even though it doesn't look like it, but I'm filming the whole thing. And we just go home, we, we rewatched it, and then, yeah, we became a music video all of a sudden. E even saying that, we were driving around Beverly Hills. Do you occasionally go, this is, this is just ridiculous? Yeah, you have to pinch yourself every now and again, you know? Be yeah. Beverly Hills is like, I didn't think I'd ever even leave Ireland. Yeah. So it's yeah. amazing. And we recorded our first album in Nashville. We recorded the second one in, in Jimmy's studio and we did kind of post stuff out in LA as well. But the American market for us is great. They just love pop music yeah. and, and we're signed over there. So we spend quite a bit of time there, but we love it over there. What I like about you guys is there's none of this, oh, we don't mind, we'll just sell a few records. You want to be the biggest band in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Have you ever had the Bono chat? Because a lot of young bands get the Bono chat with advice on being not the biggest band, but number two. <laughs> no, we haven't. I, I want to be bigger than you too, though. Yeah. You know I mean? mm. <laughs> that's that's laying down the gauntlet, Bono. If you're hard yeah. enough. If um. <laughs> but it's just, I think it's just the type of people we are. Like, no matter what job I would have been in, I would have wanted to be the best at that job. So there's, no, I didn't think there's a point in starting a band if you don't want to be the best band. It's just our mentality. Yeah. You spend a fair bit of time in the states, obviously, because it's another massive market. But LA, the record company's based there. Yeah. So have you got your head round? Because LA bolts together in a strange way. It does. Jimmy Jimmy knows his way around LA a lot more than, than I do. I do because I mostly drive. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's 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 quite easy to get into, like because you don't realize how familiar familiar you are with America just from TV. Yeah. And everything, the whole culture, you just immediately become involved. And the fact that we can go there and be a band and not have to be, there's no struggle. You know, we're going there for a, a purpose every time and to do amazing things. It's it's just we're very very lucky to be able to do that. So. We, we love it. We make the most of it. Gary Lightbody told me he had to leave LA on one occasion because it was too sunny and he couldn't write miserable songs. <laughs> does, does it change your headspace? It does change your headspace. It actually had quite a bit of an impact on the album, really, didn't it? This, this yeah, next it album, it's kind of... I found writing lyrically, it changes your whole kind of concept of writing. It's, very, like, it's just a completely different way of writing than me kind of writing in my bedroom in a tie but it's it's still it's it's still quite similar but it's like you just constantly feel inspired when you're there because yeah. you're meeting new people you're seeing new places all this stuff is happening to you so it's 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 hard not to write about that and it's hard not to let it influence and you come back with excess baggage all those records because if you're in like cities they have their own music that makes sense in context do you, do you buy a lot of stuff not really <laughs> We are the Spotify Why? generation. Yeah, we are. We are, and we're such culprits of that. We we get everything on Apple Music and, and Spotify. Yeah. Um, but I think I love the the whole surge in vinyl again lately. I think it's really cool. It's a cool thing. So will there be a, a black plastic version or a coloured plastic version of your new top secret album? There probably will be. You know, there was that we released a vinyl version of the first one, which is which is great. It's kind of a good keepsake. I don't listen to it. But it's great. I don't know if they're here today, but yesterday there were two very nice young ladies from Mullingar, of all places, uh, with Niall Horan t-shirts. And they want me to ask you, uh, obviously supporting him, it was ridiculous, you should have been headlining, but what was that experience like? The experience with Niall was amazing. It was actually yesterday of last year was when we, we supported Niall in London. And it's, it was amazing to see someone who you think is such a, a megastar to be just such a, a nice a nice person. He was just straight away, he was just one of the lads. Yeah. And it's like, you kind of, after a while, forget that he's Niall Horan. You know what I mean? Like, you forgot, you're just sitting, you're having a few pints or whatever, and you're like, you just kind of, oh yeah, it's that's Niall Horan. Yeah. yeah. A and the fact that he's dealt with the craziness so well, I, I can't use the word crazy, but it, it does, it, it, it is a very weird kind of existence to immerse yourself in. You were in Scotland on the same bill as the scripts? Yeah, we were. Transmit Festival, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, Scotland is a great place for us. Yeah. It, it's just been it's been amazing from the start. But um, 
we actually spent kind of all day with, with the lads from the script and they're very inspiring people. They're so hungry still. And that's that's really inspiring to see because they're still like they still want to get bigger and bigger. Because one of you guys is quite a admirer of Conor McGregor, so that that ethos was it your good self? Yeah. Yeah, that that would sort of typify what it's sort of attitude wise. Just go out there and conquer the. Yeah, I I I love that attitude from anybody. Somebody that's just not afraid. It's very easy to kind of sit around and come second and be like, oh well, look, we tried, but it's it's just not in our in our drive and our personality. We just want to be the best at, at everything we do. I think it's quite healthy. I got a very early morning uh, text from a friend of mine, again about a year ago, to say, I've just seen a picture of this on the same television programme as Ellen Page and Hillary Clinton. Um, yeah, now, show, yeah. I hear you went to that little sleep deprived. <laughs> we did. We had just played in New York the night before. Remember the Today Show? Oh, yeah. We, geez, we, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. We played the Barry Ballroom the night before. And in, we were jet lagged as in, well. Yeah, in New York. And we got home at like, I think it was like two in the morning, and we had to leave our call time. It was at like four. So we got there and. There was all these uber famous American people <laughs> like Hillary Clinton and Hillary Clinton walked uh, by and we were sitting on the ca- <laughs> sitting on the couch just looking at her like we were not arsed. You know when you're just that <laughs> tired, you're like <sighs> I remember I remember I remember looking at Jimmy, um he was kinda lying down on the floor and so I can't remember who it was, it was somebody really famous walked by and he was just like that and just kinda opened his eyes and looked and just like nah. Yeah, who's that who's that girl who from that um from Jurassic Park, the red haired girl? Yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't yeah, remember her. I know Ellen Page was on the bill. Ellen Page was there as well. Yeah, yeah I'd love to meet her. And was there a massive sort of secret service detail where you frisked and things? We weren't, but there was lots of people in suits and sunglasses and yeah. earpieces and stuff like that. So we were we were careful. We were scared. I've always fancied doing that, dressing in a suit and going around talking to my cuff. Because <laughs> yeah. people assume you're secret service. Yeah. Um, so you, you didn't actually get to shoot the breeze with Hillary. But, it, you know, it, it must be fun to kind of dip into that world. Is it, is it nerve-wracking? I mean, gigs maybe a bum note you get away with not that you ever play a bum note but live on telly it's quite unforgiving it is uh, I get, yeah I kind of get a bit nervous on, on live television because obviously there's the people in the room but it's good to kind of forget that you're being broadcast to millions of people and just kind of focus on the people in the room that's always the best way to get around it I think at the other end of the scale are you on the all round to Mrs. Brown's yeah that was good fun how do you keep a straight face I, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> It was it was great. Brendan O'Carroll is, is amazing, and he's a great. F- they're great fans of the band as well, which is great. And they were so welcoming to us. And look, you had to go to something like that and and be willing to have the crack because if you didn't, it just would have been awkward, you know. Podge and Roger back, so I'm gonna <laughs> campaign for you guys to be on Podge and Roger. You missed out on on Dustin the Turkey. Obviously, you're going around in America. They've maybe some curious ideas about promotion. How, has anything ludicrous been lined up in your name if you managed to avoid all that? Uh, I don't think so. Has it anything? Like Mrs. any Brown's scandal? What? Mrs. Brown's well, no, no, just ridiculous. sort of like weird TV shows or weird expectations because Americans can be a little bit strange, as they say, with the promo and thinking that they'll do that and you turn up and it's like, what? Yeah, they're a bit wacky like that. No, there was nothing on kind of the first album cycle, but I'm sure now with the second one, it'll be, it'll be a lot crazier, yeah. yeah. Now you have a, a, a really, as we're saying, close connection uh, with with the fans, and, and that is down to the songwriting. Who actually started over there? You, you guys have been very strong and silent this afternoon. Who, who would be the songwriters that you all really connect with, and that your go-to people? Um, well, like, uh, my favorite band is like. Oh, oh. Oh, sorry. Uh, my favorite band is like Oasis, and I'd say Noel Gallagher is the greatest songwriter ever. But um, I don't know. I love. I, I liked a bit of rap music growing up, and I kind of connected to that. How kind of colloquial and like you can. They're describing something so vividly that you like feel like you're there. Like I loved Biggie Smalls, and I love the streets, yeah. and I love how kind of tangible that that kind of thing is. But um, and I like a lot of poetry as well, just lyrically. All oh, right. Would you have been a Seamus Heaney fan, or I was in default in school yeah but i like yeah. like sylvia platt and john cooper clark is my favorite poet oh johnny cooper clark yeah, he is gone I, I know john and he's a great value that's that's a hookup we'll yeah. organize yeah they're. so you guys who, who are the real kind of singer songwriters or, or bands you you sort of connect with um i think for like well for the three of us over here we kind of all grew up together listening to the same music but we like for me anyway john mayer was a big songwriter for me growing growing up and it's just kind of like, it's, it's for, for, for me anyway, and for us being more like musician-wise and not very lyrical people, we're more into like the bands and even like Ryan saying Oasis, and you even saying we want to, us wanting to be the biggest band in the world. There seems to be the same kind of vein between all of us that we all look up to very big bands, extremely big bands in the past that have done amazing things. 
and like they are always people we aspire to be like yeah. and you know so it's 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 just a thing of that we all grew up listening to bands that really made an influence on the world and like that's the kind of attitude we instantly have and that influences us subconsciously as well we don't even realize we want to be like that it just that's that's the way we were raised in music you know you had to listen to queen and the beatles and all that you know when we were growing up so i suppose everything and anything that has any kind of positive influence on us you know put it down on the list i'm, I'm jimmy's favorite songwriter well, I, I, absolutely. Yeah, I should have said Ryan Hennessy, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm determined to get you two to talk. So, uh, no. <laughs> They're on security detail. In case that's you guys it, yeah. get a bit too frisky, they'll, be, they'll put themselves right in the way. That's, take a bullet for these that's boys. That's our secret service there. So, anyhow, um, main stage tomorrow. I think you're the bookie's favourite to have the biggest crowd. I, I told uh, Marion Fanuka you'd have the biggest crowd. I'm going to put a, a fiver on you. What was your first picnic experience? Well, my first picnic experience was um, three years ago. Um, was I went as a punter. I came on the Friday with my friends, and I got a, a little bit too drunk the Friday night. It was really schoolboy error. It was. It was a schoolboy error. I went in deep early, <laughs> and um, I was so hungover the next day that I left and it didn't come back for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> You're back at your mummy's in I a was, night. Yeah. Mummy. Uh, um, what would be your tipple on a, on, a, on a moderate night out? Um, it, it really depends on kind of, we, we all love a bit of red wine recently, it's great. Yeah. Um, it's great with dinner and gets the ideas flowing. But we don't, like, we're the least rock and roll band in the world. We really are. We're so, we like, we don't go out partying or anything like that. It's like everyone today is like, oh, you're having a few points. We're like, no. What would be your recommended wild thigh night out? We, we start at, <laughs> we start at lunchtime with a few sharpeners in what pub? In Andersons, that's where you start off. And right. Off Andersons, yeah. And would they do a decent toasted sandwich? Uh, in Andersons, no, they don't actually. But look, there's so many shops around the town. You can just walk over, half cut, and get yourself a sandwich anywhere. Well, uh, and where would you go then in the evening? What What are the really hip nightclubs? In a Thai, um, it, look, it depends on the night, really. Uh, there's the CI bars. The, is, is there's so many options, <laughs> you know. So many options you can uh, have. Where did you last style. get to gig at home? Have you done any sort of secrety stuff? or? We played a hometown gig in a Thai um, in the GA grounds when we were starting off as a band. And that was amazing. Like, the, the whole town came together. And I've, I've never felt an atmosphere like that in the town in my life like there was taxis running for free because we put the gig on for free oh, there was, was 5,000 tickets and they were free it was first come first serve and the taxis um, were running for free that night and stuff like that so that was that was the and then the last time we played Electric Picnic but that was the closest to home since you're on Republic Records in America quite a roster do they have a Christmas party have you pulled a cracker with Nicki Minaj or Ariana Grande <laughs> no but we did go to a party <laughs> we did. that do you know um, DNCE, like Joe Jonas and all them, they were all there. Right. Um, the B-listers. We were like the Z-listers <laughs> at that party. We were mo the less than Z-listers, yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of massive characters there. I'd love to know who they actually are. They're, they seem famous, but I don't know who they are. You've got to get an invite to that Christmas party. Yeah. Final thing, lads, we, we probably touched on, on, on a good few of them. Any other real magical moments from the last two or three years that have really impacted on you? Um, yeah, there's like a gig-wise, there was the RDS, of course, and the, the last time we played Electric Picnic, that hometown gig in a tie. But then I think for us, releasing our debut album was like... Yeah, like being able to release an album and for it to get such a great response and to still, like you said, still be going and yeah. like that. It's just, it's it's amazing that we, we were we were living with the songs for so, mu so much and we were listening to them every day. It's not until you sit back and listen to uh, the album objectively that you realize like all the hard work you put into it and this yeah. is what you get. Yeah. You know, you get like 45 minutes of songs after a whole load of so much work. And that's like, it's just an amazing thing to be proud of for us. It's a great achievement and always to be reminded that that album was what launched us uh, to this success. Like That is a lovely upbeat note to end on. Please thank, picture this. Thank you. Thank you. 8.45, make my bet come up. Main stage tomorrow night.